everybody. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm going to read the goals here and get started. Okay. Hello, Abby. I cannot think of one specific goal. I thought about something more serious, but instead opted for something just for kicks and to see what insights may come from it. Let's look into the Prantians. This is what I am calling the praying mantis ant beings, the Prantians. I love that. Okay. The idea being that there are no future or past incarnations in a timeless universe and that a group or collective created this race of beings to exist and learn. Can you journey into the Prantians world and see what they can teach us about how and what we create in our existence? Cool. So I'm going to be tapping into the praying mantis ant beings. I, I love your, your lingo here, prantians. That's great. I love the concept. If we're looking at a timeless universe, there's not going to be any future or past lives in a timeless universe. So there's going to be a collective. So I'm just really tapping into it. There's a lot of deep energy here. I feel like I mean, I feel already kind of like a like there's intensity. I feel there's something breathtaking. I feel there's something um bigger than I can understand here. Um, that's just as of right now. I'm going to go ahead and relax and get tuned in and let's see what comes up. And thank you so much for sharing this openly with others. This is going to be so interesting for all of us. Okay. Right now, there's a feeling of kind of withdrawn, like um, they've stepped stepped back. Um, I'm working my way towards them. There's a lot of conversation going on amongst the amongst this group that I'm tuning into here. And there is a feeling of kind of being underground and digging tunnels. I don't know if that's that's what they do <laughs> or it just so happens. I'm, I'm kind of, I feel like I'm moving through an earthy space um, to get to them, okay? I'm moving through a tunnel in a way, an underground tunnel. And when they speak, it sounds kind of like... Um, Of, it's a vibrating noise, but it also has blips in it, okay? And it could even feel sound like a bit stretched, um, like a stretched sound that has vibrations and then stops like blips in the vibration. Um, and so when they're talking, it, it, it sound, it's like it's a lot of noise, okay? And it's very serious. They're talking very seriously amongst each other. They're very aware of me and me entering into their space. Um, something is undecided. I don't understand what that would be just yet. All right, there's another thing that I am experiencing here. Something different. It's a wall. It's a wall created of the same sound that they speak from, okay? And it actually is a dense material. So this wall is made out of frequency patterns, out of sounds. You can't cross um, to the other side of these sounds. 
it's literally like trying to walk through a wall. So these frequency patterns are enough. It's like um, you can't walk through them. So I'm at this wall now and I'm looking through it and I'm seeing them through almost like glass, but it's uh, sound waves. It's very obviously a solid wall. They're th the reason why they're in conversation is because um, there is a hole here, as in um, we're learning more about them and then taking what um, they have to share with us and we're presenting it to the human race here through YouTube, right? Um, but it feels like a very close connection that they have with you. Um, so they're also um, deciding what the message is going to be. I mean, they're taking this seriously, you know? Um, but they also want to reach you as well. Not just like all of us. They want to also reach you. Um, so they're still, they're formulating this message. That's interesting because we're talking about a timeless universe. Um, and they haven't decided <laughs> what they're going to say yet. Um, so it takes time to make up these, th th make up their mind, apparently. <laughs> All right, the, there's already a male um, persona, and um, he's talking about dimensions and the importance of there being dimension in order to um, create a pattern of, of what we would define as our own history. Um, so in certain dimensions of time and place, then no, they haven't decided yet. They haven't made up their mind. They did decide to create this wall until they were, um, they kind of felt like they knew they had come to a consensus in a way. So they're in a dimension of time here. What's interesting is these are incarnate beings. There's versions of these beings that are more like, um, higher selves um, that are sending um, inspirations through their bodies, through their forms, um, to work through um, the learning and the lessons that come through this race. And this collective, this is an incarnate collective, which means they do experience time. And this one that I, I'm called to, this group here that I am traveling to, that I'm called to connect with and share this message with all of you, um, this is what I'm being shown. This male persona is very strong. Um, <clears throat> he has a very strong presence. And one thing that I'm noticing is um, something is not resolved within their hearts. And that's something about me it feels like it's um, invading their space for some reason. This is for a reason. Because in inside of me, I, I say, okay, you, you guys do your thing. I'm going to go to a higher dimensional um, realm. Something even more timeless as we were talking about. The manifestation of these beings. Let's go there and see what we can discover. But I'm, I'm, ex I'm getting like signals from this higher realm um, that this is important learning here between my consciousness and my human perspective of things and how this is translating through my soul energy, etc. And for them too. And that this interaction is a really um, special thing that we are learning from each other. We are learning from each other. It's not just um, us discovering from their perspective ourselves. Um, it's us also helping them to understand themselves too. Um, these beings have more um, of an insecurity. Um, they aren't, they are kind of like underground in a way. Like they don't want to just um, be found or discovered. Um, it's a, uh, they don't feel secure or safe when that happens.
That's why I'm called to go visit them. You know these beings. These, this, okay, there's so much more coming forward here. All right. What I'm going to do is help them to relax because something felt like off in their heart. Like they're kind of like this male persona is kind of um, standing his ground against me in a way like, um, like shielding the others, like trying to, as a, like a protector or a leader for the others. And they're all trying to decide what, what they're supposed to be um, saying or how they're going to express themselves. They also know your, your soul. So there's some kind of awareness here. It doesn't seem like this this reached them like they they were um I'm suddenly here they're suddenly becoming aware they're processing and deciding what it all means to them and it's a small group that I'm interacting with maybe eight of them or something I'm relaxing their hearts is what I'm doing and I'm going to give this time which means that Right now, literally in a minute to or less here, I'm creating what is like as whatever time that they need in order to catch up with whatever they want to share their understanding of what this is about. Um, and then I'm going to go forward in time and interact with them in the future um, and then see what they have to say with us, okay? Say, say to us. So obviously this session is to reveal something about um, how we connect with other beings in the universe that we, um, we, we matter to you, that we can teach other beings that, that we would see as being able to teach us something, um, giving you an understanding about how time works. Um, they're, they're very uh, intelligent because as that being was explaining dimension, it was like very important for him to help us understand dimension right then and there. But there was still this consensus of discomfort and confusion and not wanting me to be too close to them. Them creating this frequency fence so I can't enter in too close to them. <laughs> now we're going to go into the future, okay? So the future where they know what, what's going on and they're going to talk to me. <laughs> All the while, I get to experience a higher realm um, a collective of, of um, let's say, their higher selves that are wanting me to reach this version of their incarnate selves. <laughs> Do you guys see how the infinite universe works? <laughs> okay. And how quick you can move through it. I mean, I'm just sitting in a chair here and I'm traveling the universe interdimensionally and talking to different races of beings. So, now I'm going to pause. Because I'm creating a time timeline and then I'm going to go into the future. Okay. They're, I'm just going to be blatantly honest here. They're not... Um, they don't like us the way that we feel vibrationally. They feel like we are threatening people, like we're threatening vibration. Um, that's why they are creating kind of like a vibrational barrier. So to protect themselves, to protect each other. And this is a message about us and, and the world right now is are we working together to, to protect the collective from what is out there? Um, it, ca it could be beyond our race, you know, in, in a way. Like, um, it's giving us perspective on are we helping each other? Are we working together as a team to help each other? Um, or are we afraid of each other? Are we harming each other? They don't harm each other period. They don't. They protect each other. And they work together and everybody shares a consensus um, is made and um, they, they, they have to make a decision and then they stick with that decision. It's interesting because they're, they seem to be in pods or groups. So it would be hard. It's in a way it would be hard for them to work in like thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of themselves. So they work in smaller groups 
and they work together as a team to make a decision and then they have to follow through with that decision. This isn't like a hive mind either. Um, they're actually interacting with each other. But they're also interacting more with, than just with voice. It's uh, um, everything is being expressed simultaneously. Like they're picking up on each other, like empathetically, that sort of thing. There's just such an intensity and I feel like they could be um, aggressive even if they feel threatened. Let's see what they know about you. Oh man, they they totally know who you are in a very loving way. Oh wow. Um they're showing what what they're doing is um giving me the feeling of love. I mean, it's a totally day and night um ex shift here. It's like uh, going through the the album of, of baby pictures and toddler photos and images of when you were so much younger. Um, it feels like very sentimental. It feels reminiscent. Um, they remember every soul um, that has ever explored being in their group. They're familiar with your vibration. They're familiar with your song or your sound. They're familiar with who you are. And there's an absolute family connection between each other. Like they are bonded family members. And you're part of their family. Somehow you're still connected to this group as in... You're still a part of this group somehow. It's like you you never leave this this family. And that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. You have so much you you have so many memories inside your spirit that it's no wonder you came here to earth. Because you've ha you've experienced so many different versions of a family, you've experienced so many different versions of team teamwork, um, growth, um, evolution in in many different races and across the universe. I mean, I get to I get to feel this instantaneously feel this um, awareness about you, And you wanting me to visit them is something in your heart that is wanting to feel close to your family, um, close to this, um, these beings that protect you and each other, um, that work together, they speak the same language with one another, they make a decision, they all agree, um, they, it's a decision they all agree upon, they protect each other big time. And you wanted to feel that in your heart, um, reconnected. You wanted to feel a reconnection with them in your heart because you miss them. You miss their energy. You miss the, you miss that. Everything's changing and now they're dropping the shield. I feel like, um, there's possibility that um, this message was already, they were, they've already orchestrated the entire thing. So when I go to visit them and I'm analyzing all these details, it's almost as if it's exactly as they wanted it to be in order for us to um, think about the universe, think about our own race, think about how we are, um, we are acting on defense, um, putting up shields, blocking ourselves in. Um, what is our relationship with family? Are we digging ourselves into a hole? Um, do we live underground in tunnels? Um, is it easy for our human race to make decisions as um, billions of people? Or is it easier for us to make decisions a as a family unit? And exploring um, the power of, uh, of units of people um, working together in small groups as a, as a team. 
that support each other and come to a consensus. So it's very hard for lots of people to decide. Um, it's much easier for, for everybody to be heard in a single room and then work together um, in a dis as a decision. So these beings, I'm, I, I'm starting to become more aware even now that... Um, this whole channeled channeling, this whole experience of them, my interpretation, um, it kind of shows me that my human mind, um, they're able to introduce to my human mind the, a message that is exact is exactly like this. Okay, it's almost as if they knew it all along, <laughs> um, and we are we are to be introduced to these different topics in a way that makes us feel emotional, feel concern, feel um, question like a question, you know, like, um, it's giving us access to a lot of our own personal psychology, a look into how our collective is making decisions. Um, how are we fearing? How are we digging ourselves into a hole? So it's, it's, it's a multidimensional message, no doubt about it. I'm starting to feel more of the heartbeat of this group and the heartbeat, um, and connection of yourself. And in a way you, you love, you, you know about them, um, you're aware of them, you have such a love and admiration even for them. You know that um, the human race needs messages of love and support. Um, and you really want to, you yourself, want to reach people here on earth. Um, and this is one way you, you could come out of the box to reach the human race through through this session and introducing these race this race of beings and introducing us to a message that gives us perspective on how to better humanity and it's you orchestrated this do you see that you orchestrated this they want you to believe in yourself more you know <laughs> um, you're a part of their family you can believe in yourself more you're one of us of course you can believe in yourself more <laughs> it's like uh, it's kind of like that. I like how enriching and abundant I feel um, in the interaction with them. And it's almost like I'm getting caught up to speed with what they had already kind of orchestrated all along in order to create many different messages in one. Um, through. So I'm just going to pause for a minute, okay? I'm entering into a timeless um, version of themselves. And it feels like a heartbeat. And they're sending vibrations of love. And it's it feels like hope. Because people are losing hope. And they show me our earth um, full of uh, tunnels and people are trying to find their way. And it's hard to feel guided right now on planet earth. And you yourself are wanting messages of hope, more messages of hope for humanity. Um. Even, and it feels like you have a strength um, where you wouldn't, you wouldn't need per se hope on a level that a, a lot of others would need it. You would be more on a leadership role where you can um, be strong in your stance with hope um, and how you've worked with it in other lives and how you've worked through the dismal and the deteriorating and the difficult times. Um, because you've been there, done that enough times that you've developed a strength um, and even a leadership ca capability um, that you can be a beacon um, of just representing um, hope or a positive um, stance for others to help um, help people somehow. And they show me that the beat of their heart is within your heart. And as your heart beats um, in alignment with their heart, they're also um, guiding you throughout all of time forever. They'll always be a part of your own um, energetic um, guidance because even your time with them, um, as it exists in all times kind of thing, it's a timeless connection. It's always going to be, you're always going to be with them, always. 
and they they fondly love you like very very fondly um love you and they want you to feel that love and they want you to it's like um feel more more security in who you are and what you have what your gifts are um they kind of show me you that it would be easier if you could be in a group of people that are working together as a small group like a niche of like eight people working together for a similar goal and then presenting that um project um unveiling it like everybody has a role and everybody knows what their role is within that group um it's almost like you are looking for a group or a, a niche of souls here on the earth um, that you can collaborate on creating something to better the planet. Like you're not giving up on the human race kind of thing. Um, but it, it feels um, difficult because it feels like you don't have that, okay? Whereas these beings, these praying mantis and beings, um, that I, this group that I'm t particularly tuning into, there's going to be so many different groups, so many different versions of them. Um... They work in a group and everybody has a, a role and everybody's opinion is extremely important no matter what your role is. Um, and they have to collaborate and come to a consensus and then they follow through with that decision. You really want to be in that kind of environment because you feel like you thrive in that environment. And, you, you know, you actually do parallel with the leader of this group, um, the strong leader who was kind of standing before in the forefront of them and speaking, and that and this, like, fence has kind of been put up. Um, you actually have, um, that you also have a leadership persona to you, um, and even a, a very strong stance and ability to protect people, actually protect people. And give people security and safety because you um, are strong in yourself. And you're strong in what you believe in. So you actually have the capacity to be a strong leader. But you have to believe in yourself. Like that, that is also what's coming up here. And remembering that you're always a part of their heart. Every day of your life, you are with them and they are with you. Um, they're so honored to have this time um, to to share in their um, way um, to teach us and help us to view ourselves um, through their eyes in their just their own style of ex of of self expression. I'm gonna ask them um, what they if there's anything that they admire about the human race. So let's see. Um, because obviously we all have things we can work on. <laughs> um, what are the things that we do good? <laughs> I want to know about that. Let's see. Wow, there's so much that we... Um, it's almost like it's not yet time for us to tune into our gifts and talents collectively yet. Um, to really understand how and what our, our true role in the universe is. Because right now we have to get through... Um, it's They show me two teenagers that are um, fighting. And it's just... It's like the parents are rolling their eyes. These two have been fighting since they were, they were kids. Like, why can't they just get along? Um, they're they're going to need each other later in life. And they just haven't woken up to that reality yet. Um, so, so for some reason, we're kind of in this teenager -y phase where we're still fighting with our brothers and sisters. We haven't grown out of it um, to realize that we actually do need each other. And there's, there's parts of us um, that aren't fighting at all and parts that can't stop fighting. Um, and that has to cycle through for us to truly understand um, our role in the universe, in the universe. Um, it's hard it's hard to explain what they're saying to me about our role in the universe. It's pretty profound to be honest. 
we have to stop um, this bickering amongst ourselves and each other. We have to stop because you can't um, grow unless you learn how to work together. Otherwise, we're basically kind of circulating in the same water for years and years and years. We're not like... Um, it's it's an opportunity to better each other and the earth and the way the everything like everybody wins when we focus on everybody and um they show me that when we focus on each other and bettering each other's ha like hearts and lives um that <sighs> Okay, I see a human being um, as part of this vision. And their brain is made out of gold. Um, and they have no scalp, like, they have no um, scalp, basically. It just looks like a um, an invisible, I don't know, glass. Like, I can look into their brain, see into their brain. Um, and everybody is tuned into one another on a level that's very kind of, they're empathically tuned into each other. And even tuned into planets and stars at great distances. And there feels like a, a mending or healing or a rejoining or a reuniting of some kind in the universe. And it's on a really grand scale. Like, like our race um, exists here for a very special purpose. And they show me a, an opportunity to harmonize the universe with our energy. Um, it's like the earth needs po deposits of crystals um, in different places in order for it to be in a harmonic balance within and, and around itself. Um, and so the universe needs the human race um, as like a crystal deposit of our own kind um, for that role. But it is hard for um, races to evolve. Like, I, it, it's kind of like it's, it's hard for races to evolve. And they aren't showing me that all races have, have the same challenge that we have. Um, but they show me that us again fighting like teenagers that haven't realized how we actually need each other and this isn't um, this isn't this isn't working. We can't behave like this. We can't even see our our purpose um, because of the noise and need to um, is louder. The argument is louder than the opportunity to to heal everything. I'm asking them um, briefly about their f um, frequency fence and um, that message about how this disappointment in, in humanity and they don't um, trust, you know, they don't want that energy in their life. Um, what are we to, how are we to translate that exactly? This is conf this is complicated. They show me that they are the nucleus. This family of them is like uh, the nucleus within a heart, and when the heart has been harmed, it is natural for you to try to shield shield it. Um, it's kind of like a child that's being abused would naturally um, try to shield their face or shield their body from being hit any longer. So a lot of human beings are shielding themselves from each other. We aren't trusting each other. Um, our hearts are, we're putting up a frequency of sounds um, that's not allowing anybody in. It's not even allowing our, our, our soulmates, our ancestors, um, our family of, of prantians um, into our life because there's so much um, abuse that we've all been through. We, our hearts are, are shielded. Um, and we have to remember that when we shield our heart, um, we, we are also keeping out those that we love. So when they're showing me this um, frequency that they're inside of, 
um, and that you are now outside of that frequency pattern, like, um, and how when I was allowing you, like, we were feeling the connection and how it shifted, and the heart energy opened, and it's the fond memories. Um, we have to remember it's love that that it, we have to remember love and connection and family, um, and the bringing down of um, these barriers, and these barriers are made up of frequency patterns sounds they're straight up walls we aren't um letting anybody cross those um cross the lines here we're not letting people in even people that love us in and people that we miss that we want inside of our heart space that's that's what they're showing me about that They show me that we that I've been tuning into that image and it's kind of in a dark place in a hole um, underground with tunneling to get to it. And they're showing me the human race is um, kind of tunnels um, with with a, it's like um, fear and insecurity with like stepping back, not wanting um, to be found not wanting to be discovered, not wanting anybody to come interact with you, um, pushing people away, pushing the light out. Um, we are burrowing into the ground. They're asking me um, to let go of that image of them. <sighs> because we're going, we, we don't want that image for the human race either. Because you can feel how difficult it was for me to interact with them when they were presenting themselves in this way. I actually wanted to get to know them. They didn't want me. They didn't want me near them. They didn't want me in. Um, they didn't want me to find them. Um, and, and and literally, I I just was here to try to understand a new a new way of perceiving myself. It was all innocent, right? And I was even taking the time to try to heal the friction inside their heart. But what they're doing is creating a mirror for us to see ourselves, to under our understand ourselves. Um, to think about that message and what ways that you might be creating that kind of frequency around your heart. Um, in what ways you're shielding yourself from others, in what ways there may be people um, wanting to kind of um, invite themselves in, into your world in a way that they want to learn from you, grow from your perspective, but you are still keeping them out. D distrust, um, burrowing. Um, again, these are the kinds of uh, images to think about, okay? So I'm just going to move on from that, and I'm going to go to... Um, just the, the more of the higher self collective energy because it felt brighter. I felt more um, vast and understood like a, like even a source um, a, at a source level, like a source level of understanding that was like a faction of source itself that is representative of this um, um, Prantian's race. It feels evolved. It feels um, as though these beings have um, incarnate forms and forms that are evolved um, to the level that it is timeless. Um, it is past, present, future blended. And um, they encourage us to think about the evolution of humanity as having an evolved collective in a place of past, present, future, all blended in timelessness, that our collective is, is already an evolved um, collective, that our human race is an evolved collective, um, and to explore that sometime, to actually see that the way the world is right now, um, it may feel a bit, you know, chaotic and hopeless, right? Um, but there is a collective of, of our human race that is evolved um, and to, to welcome that collective to guide us, um, guide us into a place because we can't, we can't evolve. Like, um, it's kind of like if we keep shooting ourselves in the foot, um, where are we going to go from here? We're going to go places with, with feet with bullet holes in them. Um, that's not how you grow and thrive as, as a race. Um, you heal the bullet wounds, and then you dance. <laughs> and that is, is what life is actually all about. 
That is the evolution um, of our collective. And we should see that as, as, as our future, okay, in, in a way. Because we're talking about a timeless space where we have a evol evolved human collective um, of the future, which is an evolution. It, it's, do you see what I mean? It's hard to talk about time in this way, but um, we have to think about the importance of healing over harming. And why is the teenager argument um, not working anymore? You know, <laughs> like, in, in ways that we can encourage um, the healing of that. All right, <laughs> man, this was so much fun, so unexpected. Um, thank you so much for introducing us um, to these beings and allow just like giving us all an opportunity to learn through their eyes and, and perspective. Um, gosh, that's so unique and different. Thank you so much for that. Hmm. All right. For those of you watching, if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Um, I also have two other YouTube channels, so you can check me out at my Abby Normal channel and Zodiac Energy Readings. I'm also on Patreon at patreon.com slash abbynormalswisdomquest. All right. Have a great day, everybody.